Most of us associate waves with peaceful beach scenes. In fact, many people use the sound of waves to help them go to sleep every night. But sometimes these seemingly innocuous waves grow in stature and become truly dangerous. Today, we're looking at 10 massive waves caught on camera. In 2010, an Antarctic cruise ship with 88 American passengers and 77 crew members aboard sustained damage after being battered by brutal waves. The Clelia II declared an emergency, reporting it had suffered engine damage amid heavy seas and 55 mile per hour winds when it was northeast of the South Shetland Islands on its way toward its destination in Argentina. But the crew of the 2,420 ton ship managed to overcome the damage and was heading safely back to its scheduled port at four knots yesterday, the vessel's operator said. The captain said that in nearly 160 trips to the Antarctic Peninsula, he had never seen such weather. The ship declared an emergency when it lost power and communications after a 30-foot wave washed over the deck and took out the windows on the bridge. None of the passengers were injured. The ship was sailing from the Antarctic Peninsula back to Argentina through the Drake Passage, one of the roughest stretches of water in the world. Video of the Clelia II bobbing in high waves was filmed from another ship, the National Geographic Explorer, which saw the Clelia II in distress and stopped to monitor the situation. Crew members were able to rig a line to send a satellite phone over to the crippled ship. On July 22, 1946, the U.S. military tried a new type of nuclear test. A joint Army-Navy task force had suspended a nuclear device, oddly named Helen of Bikini, 90 feet below the surface of the water, in the middle of Bikini Atoll, one of the isolated rings of coral and land that make up the Marshall Islands. Arrayed around the 21-kiloton bomb were dozens of target ships. The Navy had a point to prove. In this new era of nuclear warfare, in which the Air Force could rain down explosives on entire nations, what use was a naval force? The military leaders who proposed the test wanted to show that their ships could ride out a nuclear attack and that the fleet was not obsolete. That first underwater test, the Baker event, instilled new awe for the power of the bomb. The Navy had believed that many of the target ships could survive the blast, be decontaminated, and sail out of the lagoon. But within two weeks, Navy leaders had to admit that the ships were so soaked in radiation that they couldn't be saved, and the Marshall Islands became a graveyard for irradiated vessels. A subsequent test, Wahoo, produced a spray dome that rose 900 feet above the surface of the water, followed by a hot gas and steam bubble that burst through, throwing out jets of water in all directions, up to a height of 1,700 feet. When the plume collapsed, the base surged outward to a distance of two miles downwind, reaching a height of 1,000 feet, traveling at an initial speed of 75 miles per hour, and decreasing to 20 miles per hour after 10 seconds. The video of the Wahoo event is truly amazing to behold. An astonishing video began circulating online in 2018. It shows a surreal and stomach-dropping scene. An azure wave, streaked with vertical white lines, rises up and up, and somehow up higher, until it dwarfs a red tower and row of silhouetted onlookers in the foreground. Another line appears, the wake of a figure at first too small to see, slashing across the growing mountain of water. As the wave finally rolls over itself and breaks toward shore, the figure resolves for the camera lens. Brazilian surfer Rodrigo Coxa, appearing impossibly calm as he rides down the face of this liquid avalanche. The behemoth, which Coxa surfed in November 2017, is considered the biggest wave ever ridden, topping out at 80 feet off the coast of Nazare, Portugal. Coxa broke the existing record which belonged to American surfer Garrett McNamara, with his wave of 78 feet standing since 2011 before being eclipsed. On his Facebook page, the surfer shared the exciting honor and said it was a dream come true. Oh yeah, it was amazing. A tsunami is a series of great sea waves caused by an underwater earthquake, landslide, or volcanic eruption. More rarely, a tsunami can be generated by a giant meteor impact with the ocean. An earthquake generates a tsunami if it is of sufficient force and there is a violent movement of the earth causing substantial and sudden displacement of a massive amount of water. Even if you are many miles inland, tsunami waves can be deadly to surrounding municipalities. Remarkably, an anonymous videographer captured a ship just as it was consumed by a tsunami wave. Thankfully, no one was harmed, but the passengers exclaim audibly as the wave totally submerges the boat. This experience must have been truly terrifying for everyone on board. In 2011, the biggest earthquake to hit Japan in 140 years measured 9.0 on the Richter scale, according to the U.S. Geological Service. The quake created a 10-meter tsunami that washed away houses, cars, and boats. 
the terrified helicopter passengers narrate as the wave gets steadily closer to shore. When it finally reaches its destination, it causes immediate mass destruction. Of course, this is a terribly tragic event. Many people lost their lives, and many homes were lost. The video is so high that it is difficult to see the scale of the wave, but once it connects with trees and houses, its true size becomes apparent. It is a sobering reminder of Mother Nature's power. For many Japanese residents, the threat of a tsunami wave is constant. In 2019, the South African government issued a warning about an intense approaching cold front, which was expected to bring gale force winds, localized flooding, and high seas. In a statement, spokesperson for the disaster risk management in the city of Cape Town, Charlotte Powell, said the cold front was expected to affect the Western Cape, resulting in a very cold, wet, and windy condition. But Cape Town residents could not have prepared for the astounding onslaught of waves and rain that pummeled them for several days. And a police dash cam managed to capture some of the most incredible wave footage in history. The short clip shows a massive wave washing over a group of cars. Local officials said the rogue waves had increased in recent years due to climate change. Garrett McNamara set the world record twice for the largest wave ever surfed, once in 2011 and beating his own record in 2013. When McNamara set that record in 2011, he was accompanied by fellow big wave surfers Andrew Cotton and Alastair Many. And at the time, Many said that the conditions were perfect for McNamara, who he described as inspiring. Everything was perfect, the weather, the waves, Many said. Cotty and I surfed two big waves of about 60 feet, and then when Garrett was ready came a canyon wave of over 90 feet. The jet ski was the best place to see him riding the biggest wave I've ever seen. It was amazing. Most people would be scared, but Garrett was controlling everything in the critical part of the wave. It was an inspiring ride by an inspiring surfer. But McNamara outdid himself when he managed to catch a 100-foot wave in 2013. You were just going so fast, McNamara told ABC Television. Oh, you're just going so fast. It's really, really similar to snowboarding on giant mountains, and you're just chattering, flying down this bumpy, bumpy mountain. Your brain is getting rattled. Your whole body is getting rattled. He said he was relieved to have avoided a rocky section of the coast. McNamara began surfing at 11 and turned professional six years later. The rest is history. Though it technically didn't qualify as a tsunami wave, a 1,000-person cruise ship was stuck on its broadside by a massive wave that almost capsized the unfortunate vessel. The video of this event was posted anonymously on YouTube, with little to no information. However, viewers can see the boat take on water and destabilize as it roils into the violent surf. Thankfully, the ship was able to right itself and continue on its journey. It is deeply uncomfortable to watch footage showing the exact moment a ship was engulfed by a monster wave. The vessel was out in the North Sea when it encountered a fierce storm. The video showed the bow of the ship as a 100-foot wave rolled toward it, finally hitting it in a crushing blow. Had the ship been smaller, the force of the wall of water could have spelled disaster. Incredibly, a Scottish man could be heard in the video laughing as the menacing wave struck. In between laughs, he said, that's awesome. <laughs> that's Get awesome. <laughs> the shocking footage has gone viral since it was shared online. Uploaded to YouTube, the video has been viewed 5.5 million times since 2016. One user wrote, that laugh was the scariest part, while another thought the man was laughing at the face of death. The North Sea, where the footage was filmed, is between the UK and Norway. Large ships are well equipped to withstand violent weather out in open waters, but it doesn't make the experience any less shocking to those on board. Anthem of the Seas is a Quantum-class cruise ship owned by Royal Caribbean International and the second ship of its class. It is truly one of the most state-of-the-art cruise ships in history, but several years ago, it was subjected to an absolute pounding from a rogue wave. We're just staying in one place trying not to die, a passenger joked as his friend filmed massive waves battering the cruise ship they were traveling on. Gee, man, we're not even moving, we're just, we're just staying in them. one place trying not to die. <laughs> Anthem of the Seas was stuck in the middle of an Atlantic Ocean storm, battling its way to Port Carnival in Florida when it decided to turn back. Video of 2016's truly terrifying incident, in which four people were injured, has emerged after being posted on Reddit. The massive storm had exploded just off the southeast U.S. coast in February 2016, driving hurricane-force winds and whipping waves into a frenzy. 
The cruise line, in a statement sent to USA Today, suggested the extreme wind and sea conditions that hit as the ship sailed south from the New York area to Port Canaveral, Florida, were unexpected, noting that the wind speeds were higher than what was forecast. The captain told everyone this morning that the day was among his most challenging, if not his most challenging, at sea, said Robert Hushka, executive editor of the Detroit Free Press, part of the USA Today network. Hushka was on board the ship with his family. Four passengers were injured during the event, though none seriously, according to spokeswoman Cynthia Martinez. There were 4,529 passengers and 1,616 crew members on board, she said.